good afternoon. Welcome to EHEF Indonesia 2020 Goals Online. This is University Webinar Series. My name is Puji and I am going to be moderating this webinar. This webinar uh, in this session is going to be presented by Chalmers University and we already have the representative from the university in the room. Hello, welcome. Would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? Oh, sorry, you are still muted. EHEF 2020 Goals Online. This is University Webinar Series. My name is Puju and I am going to be moderating this webinar. I'm sorry, I had the uh, YouTube live running at the same time. My bad. My name is Abhilash. I'm, uh, I work at Chalmers University of Technology. I'm sorry, I got confused for a second. Uh, my name is Abhilash. I work at Chalmers University of Technology in Gothenburg, Sweden. I'm originally from India. I studied my own master's at Chalmers. I did man master's in nanotechnology. And currently I work with international student communications and recruitment. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Abilash. Uh, love to have you here. And for the audience, please stay tuned until the end of the webinar because we will hold a Q&A session after this. And if you have any questions about the presentation or anything related to Sweden's higher education, you can submit your questions in the YouTube live chat section anytime throughout the presentation. And now please welcome Mr. Abilash from Chalmers University. Excellent, thank you very much, Puji. Um, Here's the presentation. I'm going to just start by quickly saying that I will be accompanied today by two people. I have my colleague who is on YouTube and she's going to be basically posting a few links for you as I make the presentation. So you have access to the information directly there on the YouTube chat. And I will also be accompanied by a student, Rabbani Bagaskara. He's going to be joining us a little while later because he's sitting in class right now. So he's attending a lecture. He will be finishing right now. And in about five minutes, he will come to join us. Meanwhile, I'm going to do my best to present Chalmers to you. So welcome to Chalmers University of Technology. We always use this hashtag, we are Chalmers, to kind of show all of the content we have. So if you go on any of our social media channels and you look for we are Chalmers, you should be able to find us. Quickly running through the presentation, the thing is this. For a sustainable future is Chalmers's main um, vision, right? So we have one vision and that is for a sustainable future. Chalmers University of Technology believes that everything we do has to be for a sustainable future because without that humanity and the planet is at risk of losing itself. So we try to do this by ensuring that we include scientific excellence and promoting knowledge and technical solutions for a sustainable world. This is the way by which we know that we can help humanity. How do we do this? We actually do this by ensuring that we include some kind of sustainable development goal related information in our education. So our education is always associated to some kind of sustainable development goal. You will always find it, even if it's an extremely theoretical subject, you will still find some kind of sustainable development goal associated with that subject. So regardless of what you study at Chalmers, regardless of what you do, whether you're working or you're doing a project or you're doing an assignment or attending a lecture, there will always be an angle of sustainability involved there, as long as you're interested in it and are looking for it. So Chalmers University of Technology is approximately 200 years old. We are 191 years old today, and that's because we were founded in 1829. We have about 39 master's programs. Exactly speaking, we have 40 master's programs, but 39 of these master's programs are taught in English. That one master's program is actually taught in Swedish. So the ones that are taught in English are 39 and they are running for two full years and they are all taught in English. And they are also full-time programs, which means that you're going to be studying approximately 40 hours per week. So this will include things like lectures and assignments and project work and company visits and so on and so forth. Some of these things we will actually go through during the rest of the presentation. We have two campus locations. We have about 3,000 master's students, about 500 exchange students, about 10,000 students in total. And in fact, Chalmers is probably the only university in Sweden that, and probably even in Europe, where the students actually get a name and they are called Chalmerists. You can look this up, actually about 1,000 international students and about 3,000 staff members. Those of you that are interested in doctoral studies would like to know that PhD 
students are not students at Chalmers, right? At Chalmers, PhD students are PhD employees. You are employed by the university. You will not pay fees to Chalmers. We will pay you a salary. And this means that you have to apply for it the same way you would apply for a job, right? So this is the only time I'm going to be speaking about PhD. That's it. We have closed the PhD chapter. Now we are going to completely only speak about masters from now. So we are located on the west coast of Sweden. So on the east coast, you have the capital, Stockholm, and that's not the side that we are on. We are on the western coast. So that means we have the Atlantic Ocean. We have uh, Denmark, the UK. And if you look further on, you have the American continent, the North and the Southern American continent, right? So we are towards the Atlantic Sea. We are on the west coast of Sweden, and we are the second largest city. Gothenburg is a very green city. It's an old city. It is also a young city and a new city. So there's a lot of contradictions that the city actually makes up because you have this 400 year old city actually in 2021 next year in one month we will actually be 400 years old and while it is so old it is still a very new city in a very modern way right so you've got old buildings and new buildings uh, side by side you also have all of these things that you will find in a big city but Gothenburg is not so big when you think about the fact that we only have about a million people who are living in the city so by Indonesian standards by Jakarta standards or by any Indonesian city standards we are very very small but we have everything that big cities offer we've got malls and movie theaters and you know uh, theme parks and so on and so forth so everything is available it's also a green city, lots of parks, lots of forests. It doesn't take you very long to actually find a patch of green that would be yours because you can find at least 313 square meters of space per person, right? And bike lanes all over the city. We also have islands. So just like Indonesia, where you have an archipelago, we also have an archipelago, but it's kind of smaller, right? You got, you're an entire country of islands. We, are, uh, we have just a few islands on the West Coast, yeah? The Gothenburg region is a very expansive region, lots of industries and companies and lots of startups and innovative environment here. So basically what happens is that since Chalmers is the only technical university in this region, these companies actually interact with us very much. And that is what is going to drive what we are going to see in the next slide, which is rankings. We will see that how Chalmers actually has such a very tight collaboration with industry that we are actually ranked number one in the Nordic region when you think about the CWTS laden ranking. And that is basically a measure of how much we, uh, how much paper, as in uh, how much uh, publications, international uh, research publications we are publishing in collaboration with industry. So we have a very high rate of, of collaboration with industry and production of uh, research with industry. You can also see that the quality is also very good. We are top, uh, we are three, number three in the, in the Nordics and 153 in the world, right? So we are actually very good at what we do. So in general, we are a very top, a very highly ranked university, top 100 in some cases, especially when it comes to subject specific rankings, because well, we can't really compete with general universities that are like, you know, if you take Universitas Indonesia, it has engineering, it has law, it has uh, medicine and so many things. We can't compete with a university like that because we are a university of technology. We only do engineering, right? Engineering, architecture and innovation or management associated with technology. And then we also have our own business incubator that lets us, uh, that is also very, very good. You can start your own company. There are eight things that I would bring to your attention if you wanted to ask, why would we choose Chalmers? We are hierarchically flat. This means that you have access to me, access to, to researchers, to teachers, to anybody at Chalmers, because it's very easy to call and talk to somebody, hierarchically flat. Connection between education, research, and industry, we just spoke about. You know how tightly we are connected to industry. Group projects is something that you will always do. You are always doing it at least in pairs, anything, whether it's studying or project work, it doesn't matter. International Student Barometer is a, uh, is a um, survey of students that is turned into a ranking list. So normally ranking lists are consisting of data that we provide to them. Whereas in this case, it's the students that are providing the data and that is resulting in us being number one for student satisfaction for education. 
we have a very international environment. So when you do group projects with an international community, you actually learn a lot about other cultures and how to interact in this globalized world. We give you six months of free Swedish lessons, which are included in your fees. So you actually get to learn the language. And then the municipality of the city of Gothenburg actually gives you also free Swedish lessons throughout your stay. So you're more than welcome to learn the language and it's actually encouraged in order to make sure that you get a job at the end of your studies. We guarantee you student housing. So since you are fee paying students or scholarship students, you will be guaranteed accommodation. You just have to get admitted and then we will start the housing process for you. And then you will also have the social life that we want to make sure that it is friendly, welcoming and safe and secure. It's very important for us that you feel like this is home away from home. The application period is currently open. It's opened already in October. It is closing in mid-January. On the 15th of January, it will close. So we recommend that you start making your applications if you haven't already done so. It's very simple to make it uh, during this period of time. And then you will have the results and all of that come around later. That will be in April. But during this time, you can also chat with us, contact us through our uh, buddy platform that you have on our Chalmers website. So you can just go there and you can visit us and start chatting with us and our students. You can apply by going to chalmers.se slash masters. There will be a list of programs and every program has an apply button that will take you to the university admissions website. You can choose up to four programs and pay an application fee of 900 Swedish crowns for all of these. So all the four will go into one application and you're done basically. You scan and upload all your documentation and make translations if and when necessary. All our architecture programs. We have two architecture programs. They are 90,000 Swedish crowns per semester. You're paying per semester. And then you've got the architecture programs, which are 70,000 Swedish crowns per semester. We have a free education for European students, but for non-European students such as yourselves, we have a lot of scholarships, which are either 75% or 100% uh, tuition fee waivers. Some of these scholarships will also include living costs. In your case, you are eligible for only the 100% scholarships or the 75% scholarships. Living costs will not be included in your scholarship. We have many facilities. We have our own space uh, observation uh, area, by the way. So we have two campuses, but we have three locations. We actually have our own space observatory. We have our own clean room. So those of you that are interested in nanotechnology or interested in, uh, in uh, things like, uh, you know, system chip design and things like that, you can actually access our, our uh, or even materials chemistry or materials engineering, you will be actually able to access our, our uh, clean room. We have libraries and, and architecture and civil engineering uh, la uh, laboratories where the material is actually free. It's included for you. So you don't have to actually pay extra to use these things. We have career fairs where we will put you in touch with companies. We have study support for different subjects, including MATLAB and mathematics, student union activities, and even healthcare support. During the academic year, you will be doing a lot of different things, including exams and, and uh, group work, but also you will be doing things like vacations and company visits and lunch seminars and lots of different, different things. After your studies, Sweden gives you the opportunity to stay back for 12 months. So you can apply for a 12 month stay back period. We are very highly ranked in, in Sweden and in the world for employability. In fact, more than 50% of the engineers in Sweden are usually from Chalmers, so to speak, yeah, because we are an old university. Um, so you can find a job very well, as long as you actually apply all of the things that you're supposed to apply for and learn the language and things like that. You can also start your own company or a PhD during these 12, 12 months of uh, period of, uh, you know, stay back period. Now, I hope that Bagas is here already and is ready to present his uh, student life presentation. Hello, Bagas. Welcome. Your microphone is yeah. turned off. <laughs> yeah, hello, everyone. I'm Bagas. Uh, thank you, Abby, for your presentation. I will continue with my student life at the Chalmers in Chalmers. Uh, currently, I'm studying on my last year in management and economic of innovation program. And I'm glad to share uh, with everyone about my student life here. Where are you from in Indonesia, Bagas? Uh, I come from Bogor. Cool. But, yeah. but uh, previously I was studying in Bandung. <laughs> mm. So yeah, like Abi said before, it's about uh, collaborative works with industry, for example. During my study here, I was collaborating with different kind of companies, which is very insightful for me. For example, mm -hmm. I was working in project with Volvo. And also if you see the picture, I put the kimono there, I, it is about a museum because I was working with museum also. So it's really a, 
a wide perspective of industry. It's not only about the manufacturer, for example, but also from different perspective, like from Museum of Culture in Gothenburg. It's very interesting for me. And uh, during my study in, uh, sorry, can you speak? During my study in Chalmers, uh, it's not only with courage to collaborate with industry, but also with students, uh, especially with different programs. Uh, my program is focused on management, but like if you see the picture below, it's actually, uh, we are from very different uh, program. Like I was collaborating with students from uh, production engineering and also uh, quality and management. So it's very uh, huge uh, opportunity to collaborate with different kinds of industry and with different kinds of students in different programs. Uh, you can next. Um, well, although I put like fun study, this is a part of not too fun because like if you see the picture here, it's actually part of my examinations. <laughs> and you can see I bring snack here. Uh, it's quite common here in Sweden when you have a uh, exam, you can put, you can bring uh, any kind of snacks or even salad. Like some of my friends, I saw they bring salad during the study. So you are not too stressed during your exam because you can like still eating during your uh, examination, but still you need to pay attention to what you eat, I think. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't bring your nasi padang, for example, to your <laughs> examination room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, as a student in Chalmers, I was uh, join many kind of activities. There are a lot of activities uh, held in Chalmers and in Gothenburg in general. Like, uh, I guess there are more than 25 student organizations right now in Chalmers. And currently I'm joining one of them. Is it about entrepreneurship society? And you can see in the picture, it was like, I had dinner with my friends from the society. Uh, it's really interesting because like, it teach me how we can collaborate with different uh, students, actually, especially when you're trying to really understand what's the culture of collaboration of Swedish people, for example, because like most of them actually are Swedish. And it's really interesting how it's different when I was uh, working in Indonesia, for example. And uh, as you already said before about the, in the west side of the Sweden, we have a lot of beautiful natures. Like I've been hiking, camping, or even have picnic in the park. It's, it was very beautiful. And it also have like fresh air everywhere. So it's really good opportunity to go outside, actually, especially during the summer. And uh, there's also a lot of uh, event in the Gothenburg. I was uh, came to the Nobel Prize event last year. It was really inspiring. Like there, I met like five different panelists uh, of Nobel laureates, which I think is like very rare opportunity when you are not studying in Sweden and are not in Gothenburg, for example, because basically the Nobel Prizes is very huge in Sweden. And if you are also interested in like sport, for example, I also try once swimming in the Chalmers. We have swimming pool in the campus. It's really a good one. And we also have sauna. I also tried that one also in Chalmers. So uh, Chalmers already offers you like very different kind of opportunity and different kinds of activities based on your interests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, next, maybe. And I've been received a lot of questions about the part-time as students, actually. Well, I would say, is it possible? But one thing that should be highlighted is, uh, as a student in Chalmers, actually, we are expected to study around 40 hours a week, which means it already includes your lecture, your self-study, your seminars, your ex examination, and so on. But is it still possible? Because I also have my part-time here. Uh, for example, I was one of the student ambassador. If you are following our social media, we are Chalmers, you may see some of my content creation there. Uh, I also currently uh, teaching piano to some of kids. So I will say like, this is very possible for you to have part-time as students, but still the main purpose of here is for studying. So you need to pay attention to your study more. I have a question for you, Bagas. Uh, do you think you can make a, make a lot of money with part-time work? Is it possible to live on part-time work? Uh, because I limit my hours to work actually. So I would say it's not possible for me to uh, pay mm. all my expenses uh, from the part-time. But mm. because yeah, like I said before, my main uh, aim to come here is to study, not for looking for a job. Exactly. For now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that brings us uh, to the you know, more, more boring information. Like Bagas's presentation is the best part of the presentation that we have. <laughs> 
Um, so basically you've got these important links. You've got chalmers.se slash masters where we have our programs. We have our tuition fees. We have our scholarships at the, uh, the scholarship portal. And then we've got the meet us section. So we actually are conducting a number of webinars on a very regular basis. Uh, this week alone, today alone, I have two webinars. So this is one. And then in the afternoon, I'm going to be having another webinar with two other students where we will actually be expanding on what Baga spoke about, about student life. So we are actually going to be speaking about student life in the afternoon today uh, for about an hour. So you're more than welcome to visit our events page and join us for those events as well. Uh, we have all of our, our, uh, our um, uh, so social media contacts here. Actually, this information is kind of lacking the line group for Indonesia. I'm going to uh, put that up in a, sec in a second when we actually have the Q&A. So we can move on to the Q&A now, and then I will edit this presentation to show you the link for the line group for Indonesia so that you can join. Like Baga says, he's a student ambassador, and he's actually the one that's making our YouTube videos. One, one of the people, he's, there are two people that are making our YouTube videos. And he is also on the on the line group, so he can actually answer your questions in Bahasa Indonesia if you need that kind of help. So yes, Puji, let's uh, go to the questions. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Abilash and Bagas. It was such an insightful introduction to Chalmers University and how to study there. Uh, thanks for sharing with us. Uh, now let's begin with the Q and A session. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, thank you for addressing one of the most frequently asked questions on part-time jobs because um, a lot of people are actually interested in making the most of their time working and studying. And you know, if you can get extra money on the side, why not? But exactly. uh, it's very important as well to remember uh, why are you there for in the first place? So mm -hmm. thank you very much. Um, so in relation to that, we also, uh, one of the other financial related question is actually about funding. So mm -hmm. when it comes to funding, other than um, uh, what's uh, available online, like uh, in your, in, like on your website, uh, what are the scholarship opportunities or tuition waiver available for Indonesian students uh, to study at Chalmers University? Cool question. Actually, because you don't have PhD students, you have PhD employee. Exactly, exactly. So we don't have PhD students, right? So as master students, in order for the scholarships to actually come through, what you would do is you would go to our website, you would, I'm sharing my screen right now, I hope you can see it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to education on top over here. And then I click on fees and scholarships. And then I go to click on scholarships. Right. So when I go to the scholarships page, what we can see is a list of scholarships. So it's not just one or two. There are a number of scholarships that are being offered. So it would be difficult for us to actually say this is available for you. This is available for you. But you're lucky you have me. So I, I, I've been working on this website forever. So I kind of remember those, those details. You can apply for the Avance scholarship, which would be a 75% tuition fee waiver. You can also apply for the iPoet scholarship, which would also be a 75% tuition fee waiver. There is also for you the Adler Burt study scholarships, which would be a 100% tuition fee waiver. And then you also have the Swedish Institute scholarships, which are actually offered by the Swedish Institute. And this is a Swedish government organization. They are uh, attached to the foreign ministry and are funded by foreign aid money. So in order to get to know more about these scholarships, you have to go to their website, which you can do by just clicking on this link. It will take you to their website and they will have their own process and their own information regarding it. We can't really help you more than this information that we have over here. But in general, as I was saying, you can apply to these three scholarships, Adlerbert Study Scholarships, the iPoet scholarships and the Avance scholarships. Those are the three that we have and none that include living expenses, therefore. All right, uh, thank you, Abhilash. Uh, this question is for Bagas. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone from the audience would like to know how you fund your uh, study uh, particularly. Like for example, do you fund, uh, are you self-funded or uh, are you on scholarship? And if you are on scholarship, how uh, was it like for you to apply finally get to here. Yeah. All right. So actually, I was combination of scholarship and self-funding actually. Like uh, for my tuition fee, I was uh, awarded with a venture scholarship, the one from Chalmers that Abi showed you previously. Uh, and for my uh, living costs, 
uh, it's mostly because I'm self-funding. So I already prepared everything before I came here, like from my saving, my works and so on. Uh, but again, it's also good to have some money actually during study here. That's why I'm still taking some of part of uh, part-time jobs, even though it's not much to be honest. But is it good also because I was uh, looking for more uh, broadening my experience, not only for looking for money. Right. Uh, that's uh, very interesting. And actually, oh, more question for Bagas. Uh, uh, sorry, what are the challenges? <laughs> uh, actually, I uh, what are the challenges that you've experienced uh, as a foreign student? Uh, well, I would say it's quite a culture shock when I came here for the first time. Because like it's totally different here. Like I felt like when I was in Indonesia, people are very open. For example, it's easily to making friends. But here, I would say it's more challenging in a way, not because they are uh, big headed or something, but it's just because we need to different uh, approaches with other people. But at the same time, also for me, it's very fascinating me to be uh, exposed with different kind of culture. For example, because. Uh, in Gothenburg alone, it's not only Swedes who live here. There's a lot of people from different culture, from different countries. And I would say this diversity is really fascinating me, not only for the works, but also for like uh, understanding people. Like I was exposed with different kind of perspective, which is unique when I compare to Indonesia. All right, thank you very much, Bagas. Now a question for uh, Ms. Radulesh uh, on... <laughs> An application. Uh, so I suppose this is relevant particularly for PhD. Uh, but the question is, uh, is it required for applicants to find a local supervisor first before applying? Uh, neither for PhD nor for masters. So it's not necessary for you to find a local supervisor uh, before you before you make an application. So the, the process is basically, if it's, for a, if it's for masters, you're basically just going to the program page, picking the program, clicking on the apply button, going to the website that it takes you to and completing an application over there. That's it, right? And then of course you have to follow the rules and regulations, which is like, you know, the documents that you need to submit and all of those things. When it comes to the PhD part, it's the same thing, but you are doing it on the Chalmers website. You're going to a Chalmers, the Chalmers website, you're looking at the vacancies, all the jobs that are listed on the Chalmers website, you will find a PhD position and you would apply for it. That's it. And with that, I would like to make a parenthesis and say that this is the contact page that I was talking about with the line group for the Indonesia uh, the line group. So you can join the line group just by, uh, I don't know, maybe you can just take a, a screenshot of this uh, of this slide, but basically you can join our line group and then you can chat with us. If you don't right. want to chat with us on uh, on our buddy platform and things like that. Well, probably some people would be interested in being silent readers first. Absolutely. All right. Uh, moving on to life after graduation, uh, someone from the audience asked, uh, "What kind of career opportunities available for international graduates there in Sweden?" Probably both of you can have you know, can share your own insight in this matter. Absolutely. Uh, in my case, at least, like I'm, I am a graduate, right? So I have finished and then I, I finished my studies at Chalmers and then now I'm working. I'm working in something completely different from what I studied. So I might not be the best example of finding a job after graduation, but we did not say finding the job. We said finding a job and I did find a job, right? So uh, I think, I think the, the experience is basically this, that you need to, of course, learn the language. And it's not about being fluent or anything else. It's simply about showing that you want to stay, that you want to communicate, that you want to become part of the society. And learning the language therefore gets you into a network of Swedes that would be the reason why you would get a job. Because in Sweden, it's kind of how you find a job. You find a job by knowing people. Yes, you must make an application. You have to go through the formalities of it, but knowing somebody always helps because that person can tell you about a job or recommend you for a job and things like that. So I would say, um, especially within the tech area, Sweden has absolutely no issues employing international students. Um, also within the management area and things like that. So it's not really difficult for students to find a job. The question is whether there are uncontrollable factors that you can't, that are going really bad for you. An example would be a pandemic or 
another example would be a, a uh, political uh, development that results in a bad situation for you. So those things are out of your control. So as long as those things are you know, good for you, then it should not be a difficult situation for you to find a job. Bagas, you have something to add? Uh, well, I'm maybe not talking about the job itself because I haven't graduated yet, but uh, currently I will doing my thesis in one of car companies in Gothenburg. And it's actually, I applied to the same vacations like people applying a job. So I would say the opportunity is still there because like me, I still get thesis topic from the company like the other people. Exactly. And one, one really good thing for that Bagas is actually pointing out here is the fact that when you react, when you, sorry, when you, when you do your thesis at a company, we know that about 22% of our students actually get a job through the master's thesis. So we know that that kind of, you know, um, fact of doing a thesis at a company results in you getting a job at that company is actually a, uh, a thing that happens. So it's a good thing for you to actually keep in mind that thing also. Mm -hmm. And that will, of course, become important because of the fact that we have such a tight collaboration with industry. Exactly. Right. All right. Uh, thank you very much, both of you. Uh, we have more questions from the audience. Uh, Another question on PhD application, actually. Um, is it possible to enroll in the PhD program with uh, my own research topic instead of uh, applying for the vacancy that's available? That might be a bit too difficult because, you know, the, the point is this, like, it, it's not so, the, the reason why that is difficult is this. Let me explain it quite simply. Like I said, PhD is a job, which means if you are going to employ somebody Right. So let's say you have a company and you're going to give a job to somebody. That means that you need to have money to pay that person. Right. So you've already prepared money in advance to be able to pay this PhD person. And you've decided already that this is the job that I'm going to pay for. Now, if you are going to get a job application from somebody that says, hey, I know that you want a painter, but I'm a carpenter. Can I get a job? What's going to happen is I might need a carpenter, but now I have to go find the money for the carpenter because I only have money for a painter right now, right? And that is going to be an issue. It's going to become very difficult. Finding funding for a proposal that you're making is going to go the long way around, right? So it's instead of touching your nose directly, you're touching it around your head and that's going to take time, which is not a good situation. So I would say it is possible, but mm, how easy is it going to be for you? I can't really you know, speak to the merit of that situation. All right. Thank you very much uh, for the insight because it might be something that people are not very familiar with because exactly. you know we had questions about uh, do I have to find uh, supervisors first, for example. Yeah. It seems like there's a pattern of uh, applying for a PhD that people exactly. are already familiar with and it's exactly. nice to hear that they are not a one size fits all PhD application situation. So thank exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, actually, more question on uh, the programs that you offer, actually. Somebody asked, uh, do you have any joint or double degree for engineering subjects? Uh, yes, we actually do have uh, double degree programs and things like that. It's not something that we speak about a lot simply because of the fact that it's not the, you know, the easiest uh, uh, thing to, to explain. Uh, but if I go to my web page over here, I hope you're seeing the web page right now, and you look at our 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 website, uh, you have something called student mobility, and in here we actually list a few of the programs that we have. One of the most common kinds of programs is the Nordic Five Tech or the Erasmus Mundus programs. So, and that would be basically where you do one year at one country, one university in one country, and then you do another year at another university in another country. Uh, so yes, we have a number of these programs uh, and uh, you can of course find that information on our website. We, you can just go to student mobility on the education part. All right, um, thank you very much. And we have uh, more question on uh, the life of an international student actually. Uh, so we've already uh, you know talked about before like the pandemic situation has changed a lot of stuff in our lives um, which may also be include uh, how some people let's say who get a part-time job uh, might probably have different opportunities these days and how is 
the situation actually affects uh, students' livelihood in general? Uh, Bagas, maybe I'll let you start and then I can come in with the official angle. Okay, all right. So in my opinion, well, it's of course changing a lot, actually, uh, especially with related with the project, for example, or like our Hangouts uh, sessions. Uh, we've been uh, going out a lot before this pandemic because the nature is really good, but due to the condition, it's really hard, actually, to really go out. But like, for example, there's a lot of digital event for now. Uh, it's not only for, uh, well, I would say it's not specifically on for international students, but of course international students can join it. And I've seen a lot of international students because I'm sure another international student, they are looking for many experience during their study in Sweden, in Gothenburg, for example. So uh, it's just how it's, it's held differently, but I think the student life is still livelier in different kind of ways. Um, yeah, and related to part-time job, I will say again that you need to prepare your financial in advance. So uh, do not really depend on the situation because you still don't know what happened in the future. Maybe not the pandemic, but something happens uh, in the different ways. Mm. But yeah. Yeah. And I think, I mean, from the, from the official perspective, I don't think there's anything more that I can add to what Bagas says, because the thing is that, yeah, it's a reality. The pandemic is here. Uh, it's nothing that we can do anything about ourselves. The, the university has a very strong uh, standing when it regards to social distancing and things like that. We make sure that our students are safe, that we only put them in groups, physical groups, if and uh, only necessary. Uh, so it's not like, uh, you know, uh, it's ah, everything is all right. Uh, so on and so forth. So we always take those precautions and things like that. And we understand that it affects students and their lives. But unfortunately, from a university perspective, we have to put their health and safety ahead of everything else. So uh, we, we go from that perspective and then students always find their, uh, you know, the ways to move around those rules or find a way to actually meet each other and things like that. So yes, that's uh, how it works. All right, thank you very much. Um, we have time for one more question. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is about getting uh, employment opportunities after graduation. So uh, is it common to have on-campus recruitment or is there any, um, any support from the university that the students or fresh graduates uh, can use or if there's any link to the industries to find employment? Right. So as I was saying earlier, right, like the, the university, Chalmers is one of the most, in this region at least, we are very strongly connected with industry. And what that does for you is first and foremost, like Bagas was saying, you know, it puts you in touch with industry on a regular basis. It could be through a guest lecture. It could be through a lunch visit or a lunch seminar. It could be through a career fair and so on and so forth. And career fairs are, a, there are many career fairs that, that happen at the university. Now the pandemic is of course changing things and how that works and things like that. The fact of the matter is that the university usually organizes a large career fair every year. So an annual career fair happens. It's a two-day career fair. About 150 companies from all over Sweden and Europe actually show up on our, on our campus and they are there to actually talk to you and give you information about what kind of opportunities they have and what they're looking for and things like that. But that said, each department, each faculty at the university also organizes smaller career fairs throughout the year. So that doesn't happen only once a year. It happens throughout the year, which means that you actually get to meet companies who are related to your area of expertise on a smaller scale. And that means much more personal contact. In addition to, of course, the things that Bagas also said, you know, thesis with companies, projects with companies, assignments with companies, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of ways in which you come into contact with industry. And in doing so, in having done that, you actually have the opportunity to network with them and take advantage of that network in order to then find the job that you would want to have at the end of your studies. Now, this, of course, has to take into factor all the other things that we're talking about language, grades, networking, uh, volunteering for things, showing that you're responsible and uh, you know, you're an initiative taker, things like that. But all of those things when put together makes it easy for you to find a job. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for Mr. Uh, Abilash and um, Bagas for introducing us to Chalmers University and answering our questions. Uh, I hope 
it's been uh, an enlightening time for uh, everyone in the audience as well. And uh, this is the end of our Q&A session. I would also like to remind the audience that uh, EHAF 2020 will hold virtual fair on Friday and Saturday, where you can consult directly with the uh, university representatives, including Chalmers University. And you can accept the virtual fair through event.ehaf.id. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. And see you at the next session with Homestead University. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.